its own life. So one of the things I could ask you guys about are what are the major differences within the three domains? Or I can ask you what is the difference between a eukaryote and a prokaryote? So keep in mind those can show up as exam questions. Which one of these three are eukaryotes? Actually, that's a <laughs> um, Yeah, the main eukaryote would be the eukaryotes. These two are prokaryotes, bacteria and archaea. So I would know that. Um, know the basic characteristics of the prokaryotes. So prokaryotes, smaller, simpler organisms, no nucleus, no membrane-bound organelles, very small. Um, talked about some of the prokaryotic lifestyles. So prokaryotes are probably the most numerous and diverse groups of organisms in existence. They live in pretty much everywhere, and they can also tolerate very extreme environments. All right, and remember, prokaryotes include bacteria and archaea. Alright, do you guys remember what are the two major defenses that bacteria have to be resistant? Mutation. Well, mutations in a way helps them evolve, but what are some characteristics that allow them to resist any sort of stress? Oh, oh stresses. Well, you have the, the ones that go dormant. That, that what is that called again? Yeah, what it called the sporangium. Close. <laughs> so, I can guarantee you there's going to be a question on this. Um, what are like one of question? So something like which of the following is a defense mechanism for bacteria to resist stressful environments? Something like that. And I'll have like a multiple choice list. But anyway, the two would be a resistant capsule structure that surrounds the bacteria, and this capsule prevents other organisms from um, either eating the bacteria or from antibiotics from breaking into the cell wall. So this thing is like an outer shell to bacteria the bacterial capsule, or we also have the endospore. Oh, that's it. And the endospore is when we have that kind of a duplicate bacteria that is a highly resilient structure that remains dormant, and then the original bacteria self destructs. What was the name of the Yes. Uh, this is a bacterial capsule. capsule. And that's just normal on bacteria. Not all bacteria have it. Some bacteria. Yeah, some bacteria do. Some bacteria don't. Yeah, bacteria have it. It depends just what they're trying to resist, I imagine, right? Not necessarily. Oftentimes, this thing is, it can be used for pretty much anything. Oh, there are okay. some things that can break through it, but you can't really account for everything. Yeah. yeah. So the, the capsule structure makes it so that if something gets inside of the... Well, it prevents things from getting in in the first place. Okay, and the endospore... Basically the same function, like right? Same it's like thing. Yeah, in a way, however, this thing can remain dormant until the environment becomes less stressful. And it's okay. for life. Yeah. Think of like the whole Noah's Ark kind of ideal. <laughs> In a way, where like you have this super stressful environment and then you're saving everything onto like some sort of a platform and then you wait till it gets better. Uh, Same idea. I like, I like, like, I like the Horcrux analogy. What? I like the Horcrux analogy. Yeah, the Horcrux analogy, that works too. <laughs> All right, I would also know the difference between the four nutritional modes. So know the difference between photoheterotroph, chemoheterotroph, photoautotroph, and chemoautotroph. And the rare one is photo, photoheterotroph, right? Photoheterotroph and I think chemoautotroph are two of the more rare ones. Yeah, because chemoautotrophs are right on like the volcanic vents. Yeah and photoheterotrophs, those are like plankton, right? Yeah, so just know the difference between these four and know what their names mean. So photo means utilizing light for energy. Chemo means utilizing chemicals for energy. Autotroph means they produce their own food or their own organic forms of carbon. And heterotrophs means they have to take up organic forms of carbon from something else. So photoheterotrophs use light energy, but they also have to physically eat yes. as well. Yeah. And then the, those chemo guys are going to be like okay uh, on the bottom sea vents. Yeah, so right? the, the organisms that live off the deep sea vents. The yeah. chemo yeah. autotrophs. What are these organisms called? The, like the grouping of what it is. Nutritional so, um, modes. Or just, are they just parents? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I would know the four <laughs> major categories <laughs> of nutritional modes. Um, know in general what kind of environment archaea are found in. 
Okay. Are those the extremophiles? Yes, these yeah. are the extremophiles. Okay. So just know that archaea are most likely found in very extreme environments. All right, um, moving on to the eukaryotes. I would know the general key characteristics of all the categories that we talked about. So key characteristics of like the sarcoclade, the excavata, the unicons, and the archaeoplastids, and know which members belong to what group. All right, easy multiple choice here. Also, know what was likely the origin of the eukaryotes. I can guarantee you there's a multiple choice question on that. Where, where mitochondria was engulfed for what? Well, oh, that's the origin of life in general. Oh, but how did eukaryotes originate from prokaryotes? Are you talking about when they take in the organ up or they become the, taken the... Yes, what is that the, called? Oh, that's a... Is it symbiote theory? Uh, Very close. Endosymbiosis. Oh, endosymbiosis. Or endosymbiosis. Or endosymbiosis. Oh. theory. Okay. Right? This is when a prokaryotic organism engulfs another one and then eventually gets these membrane bound organelles. Yeah, and that was likely the origin of the eukaryotes. Oh Alright, so know about the endosymbiotic theory and the origin of eukaryotes. Um, Alright, so now going into these categories. So, start plate, we have the stravenophiles, which includes the diatoms, these guys, and the brown algae. Also, know what a protist is in general. How would you define a protist? The non-other three That's a eukaryotic organism that is not a plant, fungus, or animal. Yeah. All right, so I could ask you which of the following is false about a protist. And I'll say, like, okay, like give you off the eukaryotic characteristics and then throw in some random one that's prokaryotic and then I don't know what it is. So know what a protist is. So you said just non-plant or animal, right? Non-plant, animal, or fungus. Like, I could, let's see, how would I the make this question? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, can, can you give us an example of a protus organism again real quick? Um, oh, that. A diatom? <laughs> yeah, that would be yeah. a protus. So, diatoms. so, I guess a question that I could ask related to this is, which of the following is true for all protus? Um, a. They are all unicellular. B, they are all heterotrophic. C, they are all eukaryotes. D, they the C. are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, point is, they're all eukaryotes. Yeah. So keep in mind, there are multicellular protists, like the brown algae. That's a common misconception that protists are unicellular. That's not true, right? There are multicellular protists. All right, alveolates, we have the dinoflagellates, and these are the guys that also live inside the corals that I talked about, and we also have um, the things that cause malaria, so some parasites. Rhizarians include the forums and the radiolarians. All right, so these are the guys that have this kind of a multi-chambered shell and their little pseudopodia coming out. All right, excavata, they all have an excavated feeding groove and modified mitochondria. You don't have to know these names, really. You just have to know the key characteristics of the excavates. All right, unicons. Know who are the members of the unicons. I could ask which of the following does not belong in the supergroup uniconta. Uh, amoebas, fungi, plants, animals, slime molds. Wait, what was the question again? Which of the following, which, which of the following is not in the unicons supergroup? It'll be plants, yeah. So again, just know all members of the unicons. Talked about some of the examples. Archaeoplastids, they include the green algae, the red algae, and technically the land plants too. All right, so that is the protosection. Any questions?